Music is an historical resource which is often ignored with regards to its usefulness. Historians are often keen to cite books, archives, paintings or sculpture. But when it comes to music, there's a certain reluctance. What exactly can music tell us about history after all? One such example of how music is a vital part of any historical period was the so-called degenerate music of the Nazi era. Degenerate music, or Entartete Musik in German, was a label applied in the 1930s by the Nazi government in Germany to certain forms of music that it considered to be harmful or decadent in some way. Music formed just one part of a larger movement against degenerate art forms in general. In all cases, the government attempted to isolate, discredit, discourage, or even ban the works. Based on racial doctrines of Aryan supremacy and anti-Semitism, the musical blacklist included works by Jewish composers and composers from the European modernist movement, also works with explicit sexual connotations and works of black-inspired jazz. In 1937, Adolf Hitler and Joseph Goebbels declared that the Reich must rid itself of this decadent byproduct of Bolshevik Jewish corruption and of blacks and their hated jazz, and staged an enormous exhibition of Entartete Kunst, or degenerate art, in Munich. The exhibition was attended by thousands of locals and included works of satire, caricature and expressionism. Although the exhibition's works hung exposed and crammed on top of each other with crude insults etched into the walls, the public exhibited a fascination with the prescribed art. In 1938, a smaller exhibition of Entartete Musik, or Degenerate Music, in Dusseldorf included opera and operetta, 12-tone music, and jazz, as well as works by Jewish composers and modernists, including Hindemith, Schoenberg, Weil, Berg, and Stravinsky. One may ask how this helps historians, but it's almost too obvious to notice. The degenerate music, and the fact it even existed, is the history. You don't need to be a musicologist to find out about and listen to the composers and pieces who the Nazis banned. Once you've identified some of the composers, you can find out about their religious background, their political views, and their race. Sometimes this will be obvious, sometimes you'll need to dig just a little further, but just like opening a book or assessing an artwork, music is there for historians to engage with. So, sit down, put on some music, and engage. <laughs>